Ready for the show? I'm ready to start. Ten, nine, ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Thirty-two minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Greetings, my dear friends from all over the world, the solar system, this galaxy, and beyond in the multiverse, the company of heaven, and all the beings that are listening on and off planet. My name is Martin Horst, and I am here with ET First Contact Radio, the weekly program that brings you the latest galactic news, with my dear friend and guest David Boyle. Welcome, David. Welcome, and good evening, listeners. It's a pleasure to be with you and share information and knowledge with you again um, as we're approaching the last talk we will be giving this year and look forward to the new year. This is a special program and I would like to put as much possible information across to you for you to digest and decide if you want to do anything about it and whether you want to accept it into your plan. Wonderful. We'll start off with... An inspired letter from Anne. Anne from Hollow Earth Network. And if those of you amongst you who I know many have, have followed the Hollow Earth Network comments of Zariah, Zorro, Father God, and the other channelers giving the information from Hollow Earth Network. Over the last 15 years. I have been in continuous contact with Sheldon Nidal and many other channels. For many years, I was in direct contact with the Galactic Federation. And recently, I have been in direct contact with the Anunnaki, the ones that changed sides from the dark to the light. All the time, we have been promised continuously that it will be soon, that an event will occur soon. Reading wrap up till just before Christmas, when we had several direct channelings from Sananda, the being we call Jesus, and Father God, to say that by Christmas we will have wonderful presents, wonderful surprises which, of course, have not manifested openly in this society. So I'd like to read you the letter from Anne de Hart that she gave out on Christmas Day to all the Hollow Earth Network readers who she calls her family, her beloveds, which is what we really all are. And I must count myself amongst a lot of the information that they have given me, I have found to be totally accurate. I've said this many times. 20 plus years ago, I sat down in Blackpool and drew the Godhead 
and put in all the names of all the different beings, which ones were in control and which ones were guiding us through the different lights and to the different levels. It also showed you our dimensions and the vibrations and the 12 levels of frequency. I was quite surprised because most of this information came from within me, my past memories. I also picked up quite a bit from all over the place, including the Great Pyramid in Egypt. It was a surprise when Hollow Earth Network started to broadcast approximately six years ago to find that all the beings I'd put on the Godhead are the beings that are being directly channeled via Hollow Earth Network, Kathleen May, and many others, particularly the Galactic Federations of Light, and our guide for this solar system, the man we call Jesus, Joshua Ben Yosef Emmanuel, his cosmic name is Sananda, who I have since found out his actual orb of creation was made up of Kathumi, St. Germain, and Sananda. So the three beings were part joined together to create the consciousness, as we understand on this planet, as Sananda, or Jesus. <clears throat> I was quite surprised to see and hear the information, and we were presently expecting for the arrival of the fleets being talked about so many times particularly with the comments from Zora saying it's no longer days, it's no longer hours, it's no longer minutes, it's just seconds away. And then to hear that it's soon, soon, soon. And then to receive a direct channeling saying that it would be around Christmas to expect the most beautiful, wonderful Christmas gifts. Well, Christmas Day has come and gone. And there's no apparent appearing of the reality. However, I am not the slightest bit downtrodden. I have in the past announced when arrivals should approximately be coming to have been let down with egg on my face on at least five occasions. So I no longer put day dates and times. I have watched and listened. And I still believe that every single thing will come as we are ready to understand it and appreciate it. I know that there is a revaluation of money, finance and government going on. I know there is phenomenal opposition to this by those that had all the money, power and wealth and refuse to let their lifestyles go. So this is what Anne said. My beloved, dear ones, I'm inspired to write this special letter to each of you from the depths of my heart. I will speak directly to the deep disappointment that many of you feel in once again having a day come and go with no fulfillment of promised expectations. I am acutely aware of this hurt and sorrow. And so is Zorro and Prime Creator. And so is my beloved, excuse me, Sananda, and our dear Ashtar, all highly ethical beings, always creating within the structure of the divine directive. We all read the message given to Nancy Tate yesterday from the Mashaba Force, a lead group in the Galactic Federation of Light, that this madness will end, and we will add to it now. Dear ones, I have made my call from and for the heart of the Earth Collective. Let my people go. I consider this a mandate of the highest order originating here within the Earth Collective and delivered to Prime Creator and those within the highest realms. 
I ask you now to join in one heart, open your heart wide, lift your call from your heart to God's in behalf of the earth collective now. So be it. I am that I am. And Mother Hen laid in the nada. And yes, the picture above shows the morning star. Some believe it to be Venus. We know it to be our mothership, our beloved New Jerusalem, and our galactic families and twin planes, soon to be reunited with us in blessed reunion. That's from Andy Hart. I spent a lot of today wondering what to do for tonight's show. I have been asked on several occasions by many different interviewees and interviewers to explain how the Earth works and the universe and to do it as simply as possible in the minimum number of words as bullet points and preferably on a single A4 sheet of paper. I say at the time and still do, impossible. However, after removing all of the inaccurate information and disinformation, there is a core of incredible evidence which has been displayed for your interests and to the best of my ability. For an in-depth explanation of each of the bullet points which I will give you, look up on, on ET First Contact Radio on YouTube, where you will see a series of 14 programs and announcements. These programs are around three hours long, and they include a detailed explanation of the following titles and bullet points, which I will display. Many of you will be horrified at what's actually being done to us and what's being done to us over the thousands of years. But remember, these are only bullet points. And for those listeners, I would suggest if you have a pen and a piece of paper, you can now list all the different things which you can collect and check out, not just from my information, but from all the other channeled and well-researched information which is available on the Internet and on YouTube. So, we'll start off with something which is quite stunning. We've all heard of the conspiracy theory. Well, I can tell you that a theory is only a theory when it has no evidence. So I'm going to list the theories, the information, and the different parts as bullet points. You can then check up on the information on YouTube, on ET First Contact Radio, David Boyle, where there are at least 14 or 15 full informations. You can also check this across many other speakers. David Wilcox, Corey Good, John Anthony West, Mark Colotto. These are just a few of the people who have found out the workings of the universe and have tried to express it in their works and deeds. There are many of the spiritual style. There are many of the physical style. Amongst the more well-known, David Icke, Ian Crane, myself, and many, many others have explained everything from 9-11 right through to today's conspiracies. There are many other conspiracies. A conspiracy is only a theory when there's no evidence. Present the evidence and it's destroyed. Not only are there conspiracy theories, I will tell you there are many scientific theories, most of which do not hold up to investigation for energy and for how the universe works. 
So your scientific establishment has based most of its information on unproven theories, yet it attacks savagely the theories of people who hear and see with higher vibrational frequencies into the other dimensions of existence in the same space at the same time. So we'll start off with what's going on. There is a worldwide conspiracy aimed at keeping the elite with all the power and the wealth who are supported by the rest of humanity who are all kept in ignorance of the truth and treated as slaves to those in the know and with the wealth and the connections of the higher levels of the Illuminati and the elites. That's bullet point one. Two, our history, as we are told and explained at schools, university and academia, is a total and utter lie on timelines. The archaeology of the stones does not match the stories we have been told. And therefore, the people who control us have created a false history so as to maintain the positions of power of the ones at the higher levels of our societies. Three, we are multi-dimension beings. We are greater than we have been led to believe. We exist within 12 dimensions or frequencies of existence, known as parallel worlds. We exist within these. These parallel worlds exist on three planes within this octave of creation. These three planes we commonly call body, mind, and spirit. However, in reality, we go to number six. We are all one creation in this universe. Seven. We have already, through the activities of the dark controllers, reached and travelled deep into outer space. We've been subject to air experimentation by more advanced beings throughout history, and we still are. There are no less than 22 currently running experimentations on the human race by beings who exist in higher frequency who are of a more advanced species. We are all ready galactic citizens as the black projects and multinational corporations that we have funded have expanded into and through space and have colonized a considerable amount of space. Ten. Everything we see as existing, as in reality, is actually a hologram. We are also a hologram. So is our solar system, and even the entire universe is a hologram. Some of the most important basic things to understand. There is only light and sound. There is nothing else. Within the core of every atomic structure is a vibrational frequency holding the atomic structure together. This is what is known. This energy holding all of the universe together is known as the God particle. Everything we see as a reality 
is made up of atomic structure. Even light is streams and waves of atoms, as is our emotions. Every single thing that exists is made, and it's made to simple vibrational patterns of the atomic structure. From the smallest subatomic particle that we cannot possibly see to the entire universe itself and even the multiverse. We create with our thoughts, feelings and emotions our environment surrounding ourselves. Fourteen. The beings who control us have made a decision a considerable period of time ago to reduce the populations on the planet by any and every means. Thus we are subject to poisoning in the food we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe. Continuous warfare has occurred across this planet, guided and aimed by those in control. However, we are the most strong, versatile, creative beings and we have managed to avoid being annihilated by the advanced technology and created by these beings who have used their own understanding of technology and have created the energies of destruction. They have created all the diseases that mankind has suffered from. Most of them in laboratories, which we can prove. It's time to change. We will no longer tolerate this. So now I'd like to read another section from Hollow Earth Network. And I would like to read The Mushaba Plan, channeled by Nancy Tate on December the 25th. This is from the Mushaba Platinum Light Force of the Galactic Federation of Light. The Mushaba people were the ones that lived on Maldek before it was destroyed by nuclear weapons. Nancy Tate, Bob and I recently received a very interesting message today from our dear friend, Anna Kahanda Mishaba. As I was reading it, I felt that there would be something to add to it that would come through to me. Here is the original message and then the addition. I come to you at this time because I have a bit of news for you. This is the time when all the chances that the present government of the USA is coming into tender. That is to say that it is being called by invitation to make a change, to present an acceptance of change, to make proper compensation for their actions against the people. I am speaking of the Galactic Federation, which in this instance is headed by the Mushaba group that have been overseeing Earth and its involvement along with other Federation members. If the present regime does not give the people that which they rightfully have coming, there will be a coup take place between the Federation and the present branch of the government, and it will cause them to see what it is that they have been doing. Basically, there have been meetings on the Mashaba mothership, the Nexus, with members of the Federation concerning making a move against the present regime if they do not submit to change. This is what we mean by a coup. They will experience the heartache and the sorrow 
the despair and the rendering of the display of lost lives that is so prevalent in today's society. With this display, they will find that certain memories will arise and they will find themselves labouring in the forces of destruction upon themselves unless they come to an understanding of what they have done. This is all they're doing, and it is not something that the Federation can do to them, for they do it to themselves, through their reckless meanderings through time. They have built and accrued a tremendous amount of karma, and when they see what is before them in their administration of what they have done, they will see one of two things. They will either step out of their roles with complete and total surrender to the Creator, or they will forever ride the wheel of karma until they come to see that they have fallen in a way that was unmistakably due to their refusal to open their eyes and hearts to the truth of the creation. Realize that this karma I speak of does not begin on earth. It began when they agreed to come and do what they have done beginning at the onset of their existence. That was in place long before the surgeon on earth. May heaven help them and assist them through their journey, for they have accrued an unspeakable journey, and through their own manoeuvrings, it will come back on them. The people are demanding this within their own hearts and soul, and there has been a building of strong energetic intentions for change to happen. There has been an agreement by the Federation to give the present US regime a short time to make it right or the Federation will step in according to the will of the people. A plan is in place that will come into being from these meetings. It will be the event that has been spoken of and yet another event will also follow. We have already issued this decree to the US government and their time is nearly run out. One way or another, this madness will end so that the people of Earth can move ahead in a timely manner into their new age of prosperity, love and spiritual evolvement. I ask that you all reach out and touch their hearts with your love and light for they are the ones who are imprisoned by their own deed. We have been given permission by Creator, and so it has been decreed. We are anxiously watching the last droplets of sand run out of the hourglass. When the moment comes, there will be an appearance by Saint Germain, myself and others, that will enact the will of the people. I am, by the way, one known as Catapust of the Mushaba planet, and a prime member of the Galactic Federation through Nancy from St. Germain. I am St. Germain and I have come to this message to add one thing. I am a member of the Galactic Federation and I am here to oversee that what has been said here will happen, if need be. I'm going to let you know that since time began on this planet, there has been a continuous justification by the ones who are in the area of the darkness of the planet. I am seeing that in this darkness is the root of what has been grown and displayed for so long. It is the item of the beginning of it, and it is the spot of love and light that originated from the Creator. It is where we all originated. That light has never been put out. That light of love, origin, it is always there and always ready to invite all of us back to the seed. There's a possibility that the ones who are in the darkness now will be returning to that origin of light. There is also the possibility that they will be able to see the spot of love light and realize that they have not accessed the end of their beingness, for it is their choice. I see that they have chosen on their own original level of creation that they have in their original plans to return to their love energy. Then they will be able to join the people of the loving earth and go on to the next involvement in the oneness in which we all began. 
Thank you, Nancy Tate. Thank you, St. Germain. Thank you, the Mashaba people. There is much evidence and much channeling. I will now hand you over to Martin, who I hope is ready to read you the information that's come from Catherine May in part number 43 of the information she has been sharing with us for a considerable period. Over to you, Martin. Thank you, David. That was beautifully read. Thank you. Um, David, just in, a message from Galactic Heart, from PAO Web. Uh, it's a message from Soul through John Smallman, and I would like to read that after Catherine's May message. Yes, please do. Okay. Well, so now we go over to Hollow Earth Network. A message from Sananda. Dear brothers and sisters, I bring you greetings from the entire company of heaven this holiday season. Of course, many of you know that my birthday was actually in the spring, but it doesn't matter. We all celebrate at this time of year. These celebrations go back far beyond the time when I came to earth during the Jesus lifetime. We like to think of it as a time to celebrate the rising of Christ Consciousness on planet Earth. Christ Consciousness is the will, mind and love of God. For those who have been trained by their religion to think of the name Christ as mine alone, let me explain. The Christ Consciousness is the expression and realization of the mind, will and heart of God. It is the knowing within oneself that we are here to represent God's love. I came in that lifetime with my wife Mary Magdalene, who carried the Christ consciousness as I did, and we were surrounded by our loving family who all supported and carried the mission to uplift and inspire the people of earth to ascend. It was our hope that the great effort at that time would usher in a wave of compassion, goodwill and deeper connection with God. It was the hope of the company of heaven that we would begin the rise in consciousness that would usher in the new golden age at that time. Unfortunately, the backlash against our teaching by the ones who coved their power over others led to, to the distortion and falsification of the simple and direct message of love we brought. And so, in the time since that life, we have all continued to incarnate at various times, with the same intention of bringing peace to earth and all her people. Yes, all of you reading this message have been part of, a mis of the mission in one capacity or another. And we are here again to finish the job we started during those days in the Holy Land. This time we have the help of so many of our galactic friends and the dedication once again of the entire company of heaven. We were wiser to the ways of the Dark Ones and have worked steadily to remove their influence as fourth dimensional overseers who would have interfered once again to stop us. This time nothing will stop us. Today, December 22nd, 2015, is the beginning of a new era. It will herald in, herald in the new golden age as you have so longed for in a very well obvious way. The programs we have all worked so hard to bring to fruition will seem to suddenly come into view in your daily lives. The next few days will bring changes that will enter the consciousness of humanity in a gradual, quiet way at first, with little fanfare. You who have been with us 
through the building and creation of new economic, political and social systems behind the scenes will not be overwhelmed, nor will you see the changes as something to fear. You, beloved brothers and sisters, will be the ones who will soothe and comfort those who are just now awakening. It will be a new phase of our mission together to bring to the light of the new world, to teach and raise up our fellow humans to be able to accept the goodness and the freedom we are now introducing. Yes, it will be frightening to some because they have staunchly held to the belief that one must always prepare for the worst and it has made them suspicious of the best life has to offer to them. Bringing in the new day through gifts of kindness. It may be surprising to you who have worked so hard and held your faith foremost in your minds and hearts to find that you fellow humans are somewhat reluctant to accept the great blessings we bring forth now. It is natural for them to be suspicious and frightened to, of change, even if that change brings them abundance and freedom from all that has enslaved them in the past. It is now our work to help them learn to acclimate to the good times. What a pleasure it will be to surprise your friends and neighbors with gifts from your heart, through gestures of kindness. Just because it feels right and it expands your own vision to see others find relief and freedom. Do not be daunted by those who would question or diminish the light of your generosity. It is to be accepted, expected that there will be some who cannot immediately understand the goodness of what we bring. It will take compassion and deep and the deep sense of the long range goal we all hold. To uplift all humankind to ascend to a higher dimensional life together. Above all, beloved partners, be patient. Move gently, spread your light with equal parts of joy and forgiveness. For not for not all will understand our mission in the first days of our great celebration. <clears throat> Some will not believe or trust the blessings we bring come truly from Mother and Father God. It will seem impossible to them that such a moment, monumental shift in their day-to-day -day lives could come because of heavenly intervention, since they have lived so many days in the grip of darkness, slavery and pain. We must show them by our light and our presence that such a grace is not only possible, but is now the natural result of their own deep longing for freedom and peace and for peace on earth. This great upsurge of light is not a mystery, nor is it a surprise for those who understand the science behind quantum energy. We are one joyful family. We have created this, dear ones, by the combined energy of our hearts and our will. We have proven the simple rules of physics, the simple laws of energy and matter. We cannot be created except by the loving will of our Creator. We can join our energies in a way that creates as our beloved Creator intended. We cannot be denied and the result is a magnificent cosmic realization of truth. We are one and we endure. We are the children of God and we prevail because we are the light. This day, join with me and the rest of your family in the company of heaven, beloved ones, as we meet together as one, builders of the rainbow bridge, the ones who will herald this new day and who will create the most beautiful celebration our dear planet Earth has ever seen. We will love and cry and embrace each other, and we will never forget the joy of this precious time 
we have shared together. I am your brother, Sananda. I love you eternally. <clears throat> Thank you, Sananda. Beautiful. Yes, wonderful. Well read as well. Thank you, David. Uh, David, shall we have a little musical break and then move over to the message from Saul? Yes, I'll do nicely. That's a good idea. Okay. <clears throat> I was thinking about a piece of music that connects me very strongly to you, David. Oh. And <clears throat> it's from an Englishman. And I believe you play his music also in the exhibition of the universe in Blackpool. Yes. His name is Medwin Goodall. Ah, oh, yes. He lives in um, he lives in Cornwall, and um, I would <clears throat> I had contact with him to have him on the radio program, which will happen one day soon, I hope. And the song that I selected, David, is because we are at the end of the year. It's from the album Grill Quest from 1995, and the song that I will play is called Journey's End, <clears throat> and it is some it's a song that I love, and it's a song that brings the longing to end the journey here and to make the festivities possible of the new era. And it completely intersects with the messages from today, David. Wonderful. So I would like Wonderful. To hear, yes. So I would like to hear your opinion after the song and then we will move on to the next set of information that we will share. I'll be interested. Yes. Look forward to this. Yes, me too. Love you. Love you.
Well, it was a quest for us, the light workers, like the <clears throat> quest knights that traveled miles and miles to the wilderness and the frozen landscapes of this earth to raise the consciousness of the peoples. What a journey it was and what a beautiful time to end the journey here, David. Wonderful, yes. I found it um, melodious and entertaining and interesting to listen to the music. It uh, sparked in me thoughts and ideas as it was going through. And um, yes, it really will be a, an institution, a, a place. That is a really nice and pleasant piece of music. Indeed, it is. And I would like to say, David, that we are now almost at the end of the journey and that Medwin Goodall, for me, expresses in such a beautiful and tender way the feelings that we all share and the longings we have for the new era to come. It's wonderful. The heart opens with the knowledge that we are nearly at the end of the journey. Indeed. I think there's maybe one or two little altercations created by some of the darker energies when I do feel that everything we have processed and explained will in time come into being. First of all, I do believe there will be the redistribution of the finance to the money across the entire world. And with that will come the end of poverty, the end of being forced to go to work to do for other beings and other people. This will follow up very quickly with a state of ecstasy when everyone will be out in the streets dancing and appreciating this. This tremendous rise in consciousness, happiness and joy will lift the planet into the fifth dimension and every single person on the planet will go into the next higher vibrational frequency and thus the beginning of the new era. Yes. And all the things we have been promised will come. It's all all the additional personal powers each and every one will have, the ability to see into the worlds around you, to make communication with the animals, the plants, the insects, that will all come. It will all I am come. confident of that. Yes, I'm very confident it will come into being. And if you allow me, David, later in the program, I would like to play another piece of music from Edwin Goodall. No problem. Wonderful. So, I now go over to a message from Saul by John Snowman. And here it comes. Great events are on the verge of occurring on your beautiful planet because all your prayers and loving intentions, intentions so strongly and constantly held. Many have been feeling that all the promises that have been made about the birthing of a new age of love and abundance for all have been but wishful thinking on the part of channelers. Channelers who have just imagined them to be messages of their guides in the spiritual realms, when in fact they have been nothing more than their own intents and individual desires, longing and wishfully visualized. This is not the case. The messages are indeed valid and the majority of the channelers have been preserving in maintaining their intentions, their intense desire for the arrival of the new age of love and abundance, as have so many others all over the world. Intense desires maintained and intended by humanity and precisely what bring about manifestation in the physical realms and the intensity and constancy of those intentions which have been growing and expanding enormously over the last few years are about to bear fruit. Keep holding your desires for peace and abundance for all on earth in the forefront of your conscious intent and in your hearts as you go within daily to your altars of divine holiness, altars that many among you may not be fully aware reside within each and every one of you, altars each one of you maintains and honors as you give thanks to God 
for providing for all your needs. And also remember to renew your intent frequently throughout the day. Your every need is provided for, always and eternally, because you are your father's beloved children, and he would withhold nothing from you. Love gives everything freely and constantly. Many of you know this because you have given freely and lovingly to parents, partners and children. And you have enjoyed the intense sense of love you experienced as a result of that giving. What you give is always returned to you abundantly because giving and receiving are synonymous. It is impossible to have one without the other. However, within the illusionary world of dreams and nightmares where you are presently asleep and which seems so intensely real, you can refuse both to give and receive. This happens very frequently for a variety of conflicting reasons. And it's very and it's very it's painful to experience. Love can be withheld as judgment or as punishment or out of fear of rejection and it can be spurned by the one of whom it is offered as inappropriate or unwelcome. And in situations like those love is hidden while grievance of resentment is offered due to fear of rejection or betrayal. Fear breeds fear as love breeds love, but only love is real. When you let go of fear and intend it to offer only unconditional love, your whole energy field expands, offering a loving welcome to all. Some find that threatening and retreat from it, but most respond with pleasure as they relax into an energy field that feels familiar and enticing, as of course it is, because it provides strong memories of the reality that you left behind when you choose to experience separation. It offers a sense of safety and acceptance, an inner space that resolves any doubts or anxieties which normally and automatically erect precautionary defenses against possible but unseen threats or dangers. In that space, trust grows and flourishes. Trust offered, shared and honored is an essential prerequisite for the establishment of an environment in which speech can arise. The continuing intent to be unconditionally loving in all relationships and personal interactions, which is held now by so many on the planet, is allowing such an environment to, to come into being and then grow, expand and become interlinked across the whole world. Humanity wants peace and the collective intent to create that state is firmly established. Whereas the mendacious reporting in which the mainstream news media is actively engaged would have you believe the world is falling into a state of catastrophic conflict re leading irrevocably towards further wars and the possible destruction of the planet and all life upon it. In fact the loving intentions held by the vast majority of humans is leading powerfully away from that cataclysmic and unreal end-time scenario. <clears throat> Humanity's desire for peace on Earth has become extremely powerful, and as a result the planet's energy field is shedding negativity, fear, hatred, anxiety and resentment as love flows relentlessly into every corner of the world calming and comforting all in its path. 
all are in its path, because the path of love is the only path. The seemingly married other paths that are not in harmonious alignment with it are quite unreal. And by opening your heart to love and allowing reality to embrace you, you begin to become aware of that. As you have been told repeatedly, there is only love. As you accept that knowing and engage with it, you will find everything to which you were attached that is not in alignment with love will just fall away. Fear, anger, hatred, resentment and others related feelings, opinions and perceptions. As all your guides, mentors, teachers and elders in the spiritual realms keep on reminding you, love is the answer to every issue in which life presents you. All that you need to do is accept it. It surrounds and envelops you in every moment of your internal existence, offering acceptance and guidance, and engage with it. You will never be refused or rejected. Remember that God, your infinitely loving Father, has already met all your needs abundantly, and that you have to do is open your hearts to accept what is constantly offered to you, and then relax into that divine warmth, with so much love, soul. Well, that was beautiful, David. It certainly was. I quite enjoyed listening to it. It's part of, again, it's link, seems to be linking into what we're talking about all of the time. Yes. Which is wonderful. Um, oh, that's good. Um, there's so many things I want to say. There's a, a beautiful message coming from Sananda, and it was it came in on the uh, 27th, and um, it tells us that we are a golden chalice of Christ consciousness, uh, which I would like to read. It's not very long, but it does have within it a prayer invocation for use in the coming days of the great transformation. Please go ahead, David. Okay. Right. This was from Sananda, or Yeshua, and it was received on December the 27th. You, we, are a golden chalice of Christ consciousness. Dear beloveds, behold now the exquisite expansion and expansiveness of your Christ consciousness. Behold and feel it as your way, new way of being. You are becoming and are a golden chalice a pure loving Christ consciousness. Ready to make your mark upon the world in even greater ways. For this has been your purpose and your goal for all these years and eons. To reach this point in time where you are transforming yourself and your world with each breath of the Creator's love, with each acknowledgement of the Christ God Self and your consciousness, that you are the God Self. You are that in all its glory. Feel the essence of it permeate your very being, and feel the impact on all and everything in your wake. You, beloved, are magnificent in this transformation, you are and will be experienced even more in the coming days. Relax into it. Be it. Know you are a beautiful golden chalice of love, of divine intelligence, a pure source consciousness of all that is, melding into the tapestry of the new Christ grid formed on this earth and within your hearts and connection of hearts. The soul and heart of Mary Magdalene and I, Yeshua, come to you now to demonstrate and embody the same loving consciousness, the same golden chalice of love that you have allowed to form within you and around you. We are one together as you strengthen this connection to all that is, to the pure source consciousness, the pure price consciousness within. We offer you now 
a prayer invocation to use in the coming days of great transformation. So you need to stand carefully, concentrate, and state, I am pure source consciousness. I am pure divine light and truth. I am pure divine love. I am the embodiment of pure Christ consciousness. With this, I go forth further into my mission and purpose of embodying pure divine essence for the highest enjoyment and peace of all. In divine love and pureness, awareness, I am that I am. And so it is. Namaste. Dear ones, I, we shall return with more inspiration and an illumination for you, your loving brother, Yeshua. It's quite something. On a physical point of view, we are now aware that our aura reaches out in a circle around us in 56 foot of dimension. And everything and everyone within your aura is activated by your personal state of mind and consciousness. If you are happy and joyful, everyone who enters into your aura will sense that. If you are angry and sad, they will also sense that. So try to hold your Christ consciousness and your unconditional love for all of life at all times. Over to you, Martin. Thank you, Dave. That was beautiful. That was quite uplifting. Good. That's what I want to do. To raise everyone's spirit to the highest level and know that all that has been promised will manifest. Yes, true. And now we're going to lift our spirits again a bit more to have a vision of the golden age it is called beyond the valley the beyond the valleys by Medrin Goodall an album called Saphir from 1995 it's beautiful David I look forward to listening to it here we go here we go
Beyond the valleys, there lies the beautiful future, the beautiful golden age. That is here, David. It's here, it's now. Just manifest it, believe it. Remember, seeing, believing is seeing, yes. not seeing is believing. I know. You believe in something, it'll appear. You don't believe in it, you'll never see it. Exactly. Was there another message you would like to read? There's plenty that I, I'd like to read. There's at least 20 of them. Um, I've got one here from Miss Ananda, mm -hmm. which was done on December the 19th. It's quite a long one. It is interesting. And it, it's basically current to what we've already discussed. Wow. Well, okay. Okay, received from John Smallman, December the 19th, 2015. In the illusion... Moods occur in your subjective experiences that flow like the weather. Sometimes that emotional or experiential weather stays dull for long periods. Some have referred to this as the dark night of the soul, meaning a time when they are feeling very down and seemingly unable to connect with their spiritual side, their oneness with source. That is depressing to experience. But it is a time in which great and important spiritual work is being undertaken beneath the level of your conscious human awareness. And when you come through it, as you will, it is as though a great burden has been lifted from you. And your enthusiasm for life once more bubbles into your consciousness. And your inner knowing that you are an indispensable an infinitely loved aspect of God comes back into your awareness. It's all about letting go of the illusion. And the first steps involve the personal realization that the illusion can never satisfy you, which is depressing because you have relied on it for pleasure, enjoyment, and distraction. And to finally realize and acknowledge that it can never truly satisfy your needs is very unsettling. But it is also the first step towards awakening as you come to realize that only God's love can satisfy you. Even though you may often have felt yourself to be unlovable and then assume that God judges you even more harshly than you do deserve thus confirming your unlovableness. In this, you are in the fact producing an idol from your imagination, an imaginary human type of authority figure, much larger and stronger than you, who you think of as God, and who has the same insane need to judge, condemn and punish as you do. But God does not judge, ever. He is love, and love is unconditional, because there is nothing else. So no one is excluded. Everyone is infinitely loved for all eternity. Those whom you choose to see as evil, unacceptable, deserving of hell, are just mirroring back to you your own self-judgment. When you cease to judge and start forgiving and accepting, you will see those others <coughs> excuse me, in a different light, as suffering damaged ones, desperately seeking love and terrified of rejection. There is no rejection, because every child of God and all our children of God was created perfect and nothing has occurred or ever could occur to change that. That sense of being unlovable is an aspect of the illusion that absolutely drives many humans 
to seek joy or relief in a variety of addictions that in the end only bring them more pain. Letting go of addictions can be very difficult as issues that you would rather not look to or attend. Invade your consciousness. Guilt for misdeeds and judgment of self unacceptable, not good enough, not strong enough. As clarity arises, it is very tempting to flee back into the apparently safety of whatever addiction you use for escape. Anything that you use to avoid being quietly done and alone with yourself, to keep yourself busy with the world outside, yourself is an addiction. And there is nothing outside of yourself. That is why it is essential that you go within daily. Doing so allows and encourages your heart to open to the divine field of love in which you are eternally enveloped. Many have difficulty with this because the ego is ever alert to the possibility of you abandoning it in favour of God's voice, which is with you always, just waiting for you to become quiet and open. So your egos fill your mind with all kinds of distractions, needs, shoulds, anxieties, anticipations, anything that will prevent you accessing the state of quietness and stillness that will enable you to hear the quiet and loving voice of God. However, if you just persist and sit, allowing the issues that you fear to arise and then just observe them without judgment, you will begin to feel the love enveloping you and you will be able to forgive and accept yourself as you come to the realization that there is only love, that all else is illusory. Intellectually, many of you know this and accept it, but due to the enculturization that appears to enfold you and make demands on you as a human from the first moment that you experience human awareness as a tiny infant, you all have a deeply ingrained sense that you need to conform to the cultural norms of the society in which you were born. At some stage, an intense and need for personal freedom will arise, and the child or young adult will either rebel against the intrusive nature of the imposed cultural or succumb to cultural pressure and conform. From that moment, an inner conflict will disturb and confuse the individual. And the only way forward is through it, as the mind develops the ability to reason and discard all that dishonors the integrity of its divinely created self. All have the ability to move forward and leave behind the cultural conditioning that they have undergone. You are all divine beings of infinite integrity who choose to incarnate as humans and experience self-doubt, unworthiness and unacceptability for the lessons that a life in the illusion could offer you. You choose human life in this moment of the illusion to assist in humanity's awakening process. And in order to be of service, you had to undergo the full illusory experience. This does make it difficult initially for you, as the memory of your true nature is hidden from you by the cloak that is the illusion. Nevertheless, you have limitless assistance from your support team in the spiritual realms who are constantly available to answer when you call. You have been very well prepared for the human task you undertook because prior to incarnating, you were given intense training to enable you to deal with all the eventualities that you might encounter. Still, the cloak that hides your true nature from your awareness is heavy, and frequently, when you attempt to go within, it appears to shut you off or isolate you completely from your spiritual guides and mentors, the voice of God. Often people feel that they are just wrestling with their, and wasting their time 
trying to connect with spirit. That the spiritual realms are just a figment of their imaginations. A sad and desperate attempt to find something holy to believe in. Because the real world is such an unhappy place filled only with suffering and poverty. But of course that real world is illusionary, as you well know. And you will awaken and find it has dissolved without trace. Until that moment, it is your most urgent task to go within, to keep going within, to persist in your attempts to hear the voice of God and to distance yourself from the distractions with which your egos attempt to entice you back into the illusion. You are on earth to be the light and the salvation of humanity by demonstrating love in action and by constantly holding the intent to share and extend that love which our divine source wishes to channel through you to humanity. All you have to do, all that you need to do, is to attend to be a willing conduit through which God's love can flow. Nothing more. But when you allow your doubts about God or about your own worthiness to be a channel to occupy your thoughts, it is as though you are damming the river of love so that beyond you the ground experiences a drought. Trust in God, the source of all that exists, and know that the light and salvation of in humanity shines through you to bring all home to awakening. It is done deal. Humanity's awakening is inevitable, but your input, your individual loving intentions, are an absolutely essential part of the deal. God has infinite faith in your ability to bring the light of his love to all of humanity, and your will and the holy will are one. You cannot fail because you have already chosen to do the will of God. So go within at least daily and feel the love that envelops you and listen to the voice of God, offering you wisdom and guidance in every moment. Your loving brother, Jesus. So each and every single one of us is a very important part of all that is. And each one of us with loving intent, can change the world. It's up to you. It's your choice. When you wake each morning, it's your choice to be happy, joy, full of fun, full of love, light and happiness, or to be sad and miserable. It's your choice. The former leads to evolution, consciousness, and expansion of life, the latter contracts and brings inside on yourself. So please start every day as you would wish to carry it on. And as Mother and Father God say, each morning stand up and say, it is my intention today to be a loving aspect of God and to spread happiness and joy wherever I go. Over to you, Martin. Beautiful, David. Uh, John Smallman always is able to transmit the words of our beloved Jesus in, in such a beautiful way. It's uh, very uplifting indeed. And I would say um, David, shall we now um, read another message that is from Gerrit Lamanov el Mechisidek that I just see here? Yes, please do. I believe it's a beautiful message. And uh, let's uh, celebrate what is being said here by Athena. In just returning from Athena, I then had a meeting with the Ascended Masters, particularly addressed by Semyaze from the Pleiadian Council, who then informed me that if more humans shifted from the paradigm of fear 
in which they operate from into an open mind and welcoming heart filled with peace and more wonder instead of skepticism from who we are of the angelic realms of the galactic council of the galactic federation of light landings would then commence during this year of 2016 where the Agartians would then follow by revealing themselves to surface humanity with of course major announcements from your world governments first before this can take place in which we now have 13 million light ships from over 25 no 250 wait 2050 million million light ships yes galactic councils on standby where with these large numbers you can then see why we have so many times emphasized that the dark ball have lost all their power over this planet amen that's beautiful david it is <clears throat> fantastic numbers it's all waiting to say hello to us they're all waiting to come down and meet us shake hands with us give us a big hug a yes. lot of them have given their dna uh, over the experiments over the years which is why we have such an, a, a wonderful diversity of life forms on this planet between the waters on the land and in the air we have such vast levels of different species all of which evolving and reaching a state of evolution because the dna for this evolution has come from all over the world as gifts to all of us to make life pleasant and wonderful on Indeed. this planet. I give them all my love and thank all those beings in the ships. And I keep telling them I cannot wait to give you all a big hug and look forward to seeing you. Indeed. David, I would like to end with a piece of music from Asher Queen and I would like you to stay on the phone because I would like to tell you something for after we are off the air. Is that okay? Okay, wonderful. I'll stay on. Yes. So here is Soldier of Love from Asher Quinn. I all, I wish you all were listening from here and the other realms. A blessful night or morning or afternoon. David and I will be back next time. We love you all. Soldier of Love is what we all are. Soldiers of Love and Light. To make this world a better place. And the Golden Age is here. I wish you all a happy new year and look forward to speaking to you next year. At the other, other end of the December month, we will be back in the January month. Here is Soldier of Love from Asher Queen. We love you all. Love you all.